All right, welcome back. If you're going to be a developer, you need to learn some text editor and you need to learn how to use it very well. And the one that I use is Emacs. It's a classic. It's super old. <clears throat> it's got a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm going to try and make that a little bit easier. So I've got an introduction to Emacs here that I've taken from the tutorial that you can go through that comes with Emacs, and I've chopped it down to make it a little less wordy. So, <clears throat> some conventions, C and then a character means hold the control key and then the character. So, for example, control V means scroll down a screen. And then MV, if I go back to the very beginning here, <clears throat> will, so M plus a character means usually the alt key. If you don't have your alt key set up to send an escape prefix, if you're using this on a terminal instead of in a graphical user interface, you can hit the escape key, release it, and then press the character. But alt will almost certainly work unless you know what you're doing and you've changed your keyboard a little bit. So control V a couple times, scrolls down, meta V goes back up. And then wherever your cursor is, <clears throat> you can center that on the screen with a control L and it'll center it as much as possible, right? So if you're at the very beginning of a document and you type control L, it can't move it down the screen, <clears throat> but it'll do its best. So let me scroll down a couple screen folds. If I type control L here, it centers it. If you type control L twice, it'll put it at the top of the screen. And if you type control L three times in a row, it'll put it at the bottom of the screen. So that's basic moving commands <clears throat> for scrolling. I also have certain key bindings set up that allow me to scroll a line at a time in this current configuration, but we're not going to get into that right now. So <clears throat> the next set of commands that you're going to want to learn is CF moves forward a character, and you can see at the very beginning, this is actually just one tab character, so it moves me all the way to the beginning. CF moves forward a character, CB moves backwards a character, MF moves forward a word, MB moves backwards a word, CN moves down a line, CP moves up a line, CA goes to the beginning of a line, CE goes to the end of the line, and then MA will move backwards a sentence. What a sentence is depends on what mode you're in, but I'm not going to get into that. That's not as useful for when you're programming, actually, as something like meta M, which moves to the beginning of the white space, uh, of non-white space characters on the line. So if you've got a lot of indentation and you want to go back to the beginning of the indentation, meta M is a good one. <clears throat> and then you can use meta and then shift comma or less than to go to the very beginning of a buffer. And then, if you want to go back to the place you were most recently, you've got a couple options. You can type Control X, Control X, and then type Control G to uh, undo that highlighting. Or, if you go to the very beginning, you can type Control U and then Control Space to go back to where you were. And then you can also go to the very end of the buffer with Meta Shift Period or Meta Greater Than. And then you can go back to where you were with Control U space or Control X, Control X. And then CU is generally a prefix argument. What that does varies between different commands, but usually it's a repeat count. I don't use CU much. If I have to use CU for something, I'm going to find a different way to do it. <clears throat> and then you can also use your wheel mouse to scroll if you're on a graphical display. That usually will work. <clears throat> and then if Emacs stops responding, so if you ask it to do some task, especially if it's doing something with the network, because Emacs does have network functionality built in, there are packages that you can download from various package repositories for Emacs. 
sometimes that'll hang if your network connection is slow and you can't do anything. But if you type control G several times, it'll exit out of that and it will it will allow you to continue doing whatever it was you were doing. And then if you type something to get into the mini buffer, so down here I've typed a command that gets me into this mini buffer, and then I might be in a different buffer entirely, but the mini buffer is still considered active. This part down here is the mini buffer. Just type escape three times, even if you're in a separate window, a separate area of Emacs, and that'll get you out of that mini buffer editing that was going on. So speaking of windows, <clears throat> windows are different in Emacs than they are in most other programs. It's a subdivision of the screen that you are working on. A frame is what many other programs call a window. <clears throat> so as an example, if I type CX followed by 2, that'll split the frame into two windows, as you see here. And then I can type control X one to remain with the current window and make it the only window that I want to use. I can type control X three to split them vertically or to the split them in the horizontal dimension. Just give you a new buffer to the right. And then if I switch to that other buffer with control X O, then I can delete that buffer with control X zero. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for Windows. That's most of the basic stuff. <clears throat> you can also, if you have another window that you don't want to switch to, but you do want to scroll, you can do that with control M V and that'll scroll the other window. And you can scroll the other window up with control M shift V and that'll scroll up. So that's it for Windows, basically. <clears throat> Inserting and deleting is pretty simple. You just start typing unless you are in, unless you're in read-only mode. So right now you can see down here these two little percent signs. If you see those at the bottom, that means you're in read-only mode. So inserting characters won't do anything. But I can get out of that and normally in a normal buffer you can type stuff and uh, it will go into your buffer. And if you pay attention down here you'll see that when I'm out of read-only mode if the buffer has not been modified from if it hasn't been modified you know and hasn't been changed since the last time it was saved, this will just be two dashes. But as soon as I start typing, I get these stars. <clears throat> I can switch to read-only mode while the buffer is modified, and then I'll get this configuration, this percent star. And then if I switch out of read-only mode, and then undo what I've typed, it'll go back to saying that it hasn't been modified from its state on disk. <clears throat> and uh, you can uh, backspace like that, just using the normal backspace character. <clears throat> and then there's another thing that you can do, which is if I type a bunch of stuff and it starts going to the very end of the line, so this is logically, this is actually just one very long line, and this backslash here at the very right means that the line has been continued on the screen to the next line. If I want to make that nice, I can just type meta Q and it will break that into a nice, put line breaks to make it look nice on your screen. So I'll just undo all of that real quick to get back to my unmodified buffer and then go back to read only mode. <clears throat> okay, so what next? Here's a, an example of all the things you can do to edit. We've got delete or backspace will delete just before the cursor, so just like this. And then control D will delete before the cursor, so just like that. Meta D will kill entire words, 
So something like this, and then I'll undo to get back. <clears throat> um, meta backspace will kill words going back. And then control K will kill from the cursor to the end of the line, like so. And then meta K, ah, I did the wrong thing. Meta K will kill to the end of the sentence. That's not super useful. I never really use meta K. <clears throat> but anyway, the next thing to think to understand that's super nice is the mark. So control space will activate the mark. And then your normal cursor motion commands will move the point to a different part of the buffer. So the point is just where your cursor is. The mark is wherever you set it last with control space. <clears throat> and when the region is active, so the region being the space between the point and the mark, it'll be highlighted on your screen. And I can cut what I've highlighted with control W. And then I can paste it again with control Y. And I can copy it with meta W and then paste it with control Y. And that's cutting, copying, and pasting. And I've shown you undo several times. So if I delete a bunch of stuff and then decide that I didn't want to delete it, I can just hit control and then forward slash several times until I get back to where I want to be. <clears throat> and <clears throat> another thing that's useful about this is you can redo as well. So let's say I enter a bunch of lines, type, some stuff, and then decide, oh, I actually didn't want to type some stuff. But then maybe I later, then I do decide, oh, I actually did want to type that. If I want to redo, all you have to do to start redoing when you've been undoing is type control G. And then if I type undo again, that will redo everything that I undid. So you can always type the undo character, control forward slash, <clears throat> to undo all the way back, to undo all of the changes that you've done. And you'll know that you've undone all of the changes that you've done when you get to the double dashes down here. <clears throat> okay. So finding files. <clears throat> the way, by the way, the way that I'm getting in, in and out of view mode is with control X, control Q. That's something that I think is particular to my configuration, but I'll go through my configuration in another video. So finding a file. The way that you find a file is with control X, control F, and it will ask you, hey, what file do you want to find? So I'll go to my .emacs file. Whoops. And uh, now I'm in my Emacs configuration. So your .emacs file is where you customize Emacs. And the way that you get back to a buffer that you've already found, so that intro file that I've been working with is control X, control B. And uh, normally you'll have to type in the buffer that you want to go to, but I have a little package extension that shows me all of the buffers that I have recently visited <clears throat> down here. So I can just hit enter and that'll take me back to the most recent buffer that I was in. In the basic configuration, you can just type control X, B, and then enter and it'll take you back to the most recent buffer that you were in. So <clears throat> that's finding a file. If I want to save a file, and the way that you create a file as well is just by typing the name of the file that you want to do. If you've got this extension that I have in here currently, sometimes it's useful to type control X, control F, and then control F again, and it will take you to the regular find file. So 
So I'll just create a new file. And if I type some stuff, I can hit Control X, Control S to save that file. And then I can hit Control X, Control B to go back to the file that I was, the buffer that I was in. So a buffer is just what is shown on screen. And it's just something that you can show in a window. And it can be associated with a file or it can be something that's totally unassociated with a file. So if you want to create a buffer that's not associated with a file at all, you can type Control X, Control B, and just type some not, well, I'll just call it no file buffer. And this creates a buffer that you can type stuff in, type stuff into, but until you save it with Control X, Control S, it's not going to be stored anywhere. So it's a, sort of a nice way to have temporary buffers. And uh, this mostly shows you everything that I've already said about buffers. Uh, you can list you can view all of the buffers that you're currently aware of with Control X, Control B, and that's what I've got right here. This is a little bit different. I've got this bound to a slightly different version, but <clears throat> that's what you can do. And if you want to remove a buffer from your list of buffers, you can just type Control X, Control K, and that'll kill the buffer. It won't remove it from your disk. It just removes it from Emacs. So I can do something like this. And if I go to my created buffer, type some more stuff so that it's modified, and then go Control X, K, and Create, it'll say that this buffer has been modified. Do you still want to kill it? Then you'll lose changes to that buffer. And let's undo those changes and go back to intro. <clears throat> so... That's basically it for buffers. The one other thing that you can do is control X S and it'll look through all of the buffers that you have opened in Emacs and see if any of them have been modified and then offer to save them if you want to. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it for that. You can also type <clears throat> MX and I have a special binding for MX as well but it'll bring up something like this as well. And you can type the name of the command if it's not bound to any particular key sequence to run a particular command. So one of the key, one of the functions that I've written myself called swap windows that I use a lot, I haven't bound any keys, but... <clears throat> That's just sort of the way that you run commands that aren't bound to any particular function. And then Emacs normally auto-saves things. The echo area <clears throat> is this area down here. If I type an incomplete key sequence slowly, it will get echoed down here and show me everything that I've typed. And the way that you don't do a command if you've started one is just by typing control G. Uh, the mode line is this area down here. I've talked about it already, <clears throat> but you can see basically it shows you what percentage of the buffer is above the window. This will show you what line and what column I'm in. So if I go down a line, you can see that that increases. And if I go forward, you can see that that number, that second number increases. And then you can see this mode down here. This is the major mode that I'm in, and this is any minor modes that I'm in. So you can view documentation with Control H M, and it'll describe any key bindings, any helpful bits of information for your particular major mode, as well as any minor modes. <clears throat> so that's pretty useful. And then searching, so if you want to search through a buffer, control S is the easiest way. You can see it will find incrementally 
what I've typed. So if you get to a part where it's like, okay, we couldn't find anything, you can type control G to undo what it couldn't find, and then you can keep typing, and then type control G maybe twice to get out of that search. Control R will do the search backwards. So something like that. You can see when I have only typed in, it finds in, but as soon as I type that C, it only finds the C. And then type control R again to go to the next most previous match. And then you can type control G. Okay, so if you find the particular version of the search match that you want, just type enter to exit. And then you can see at the bottom it says mark saved where search started. If I want to go back to where I started the search, I just type control X, control X, and then type control G to get rid of that highlighting. Also, control U space. So, you can also uh, go through your previous search history. So, if I type control S and then do a meta P, I can see this ink has found, and it couldn't find it anywhere in front of where my cursor was, but if I type control S again, it'll wrap the search. And you can see we'll get back to where we were. And then if you just type control S, control S, it'll just redo your most recent search. <clears throat> Oops. There we go. And then meta R within a control S will switch to a regular expression search. If you know what regular expressions are, great. If you don't, don't worry about it for now. And then CW will let you add the next word or character to the search. So if I type control S and something like next, and uh, let's say I'm going through, I'm searching, and then I realize, oh, I want to find new. Okay, I type control W, that adds the rest of this word to my search string, and then I can keep, keep searching with control S. And then I can just hit control G to go back to where I started the search or hit enter and then control X, control X, control G. So as I said, return finishes searching. <clears throat> control G, control G will abandon the search. Sometimes just one will work. Usually just one will work. And then I've covered control X, control X and control U space to return to where the search started. And then if you know you want to do a regular expression search from the get-go, just type control meta S or control meta R. And uh, you can create multiple frames. I never do. I always run Emacs in one window, window using the normal terminology. <clears throat> and then getting more help. So control H and then question mark lists various ways that you can get help. So... If I type B here, I'll get a list of all the key bindings. If I type Control H K, then I can describe a key sequence and it'll tell me what that key sequence does. So if I type Control H K and then Control P, it'll say Control P runs the command previous line <clears throat> and it's bound to Control P. And <clears throat> Commonly used ones are control H F to describe a function. So you have to type in the name of the function and control H V to describe a variable. <clears throat> and then control H A gives you command apropos. So you know your command has some word in it like oh file, but you're not sure exactly what it is. This will show you every command that has the word file in it. So that's kind of cool. And then if you want to read more, you want to read the manual pages, type control H R. That brings up the manual page for all of Emacs. There are, this isn't all you need to know to use Emacs to its full capabilities, but it is most of what you need to know for using Emacs if you don't want to write any ELISP code to customize your setup. 
So <clears throat> Control H I brings up all of the info documentation that you have on your system. So there's a lot here, but you can type M and then Emacs, and you can use tab completion in a lot of places in Emacs. So if you've typed part of something, especially in the mini buffer, try hitting tab and it'll complete things for you. So if I type this, that'll take me to the Emacs editor. <clears throat> and just to go over what I did there, I typed M, EM, and then tab, and it filled out the menu item. So you can see right here there's a menu, and then down here all of these things are things that you can access with the M command in info. So if I type M and then WID G or WID and then tab, it'll say, oh, the Emacs widget library. That's what you were looking for. <clears throat> and then you can exit Emacs with Control X, Control C. The one other thing that I'll say, just briefly, because it's nice, is that you can do auto completion in your normal buffer with meta forward slash. So let's say I've got that this confirm kill Emacs string right here. And uh, let's say that I want to have that type. I can just start typing C-O-N. And then if I hit meta four slash, that will search through all of the buffers that I have open, starting with the current buffer, to find a completion for what I've typed so far. If I type, if that wasn't the completion that I wanted, I can just type meta forward slash again, and it will continue finding things that match that. So I've typed C-O-N, so you can see all of the different things that it's looking for. And it'll start looking through all the buffers that I have open. <clears throat> but anyway, that's it. That's it for this one. Hopefully that gets you up and running with Emacs. Practice this. Learn how to use these key bindings. <clears throat> And before you know it, they'll be automatic, and uh, they'll really save you a lot of time. And <clears throat> next video, I'll go through my personal Emacs configuration, and uh, that'll give you an idea of some of the customizations you can make, both to make your Emacs look a little bit better and to make your setup a little bit more efficient. But that's it for this one. If you like this video, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit subscribe. Sorry, if you didn't like it, hit dislike. In either case, let me know in the comments down below why you liked it or didn't like it, as well as if you've got any questions, criticisms, or concerns. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks.